Good afternoon. I'm George Latimer, Westchester County Executive. Uh, we've just um, had uh, two minutes of silence at the two o'clock hour um, in memory of the death of George Floyd. Uh, and that's uh, now we're ready to give you the update of where we are with the coronavirus issue in Westchester County. We do have some announcements today that we hope will represent good news for Westchester residents. First of all, in terms of the coronavirus outbreak, today's numbers from the state trackers show that there are 33,767 individuals that have tested positive for coronavirus. That's an increase of 76 individuals overnight, uh, which is a, a very small increase. And when we net out the number of positives from two weeks ago, we now have uh, 1,094 active cases. That's a continued diminution in the total number of active cases that we have seen. Uh, as I've often said, in the peak period of time, which is eight weeks ago, we had 12,000 active cases. So being down to 1,000, slightly under 1,100 cases is very good news. We have tested 171,868 Westchester residents, and that is 17% of our population. Every uh, person in Westchester County, 70% of that population has been tested for COVID. Uh, we have now uh, a total of 1,385 uh, fatalities. There were four fatalities overnight. Uh, that number of fatalities now has uh, shown to be about uh, three and a half individuals a night for the last week or so, much lower than the peak period when we lost 40, 45, 50 people a night. Still a tragedy for those families that have lost a loved one. And I will remind you, as I do every periodically, that we have a program called Ribbons of Remembrance at the Lenoir Preserve in Yonkers. It's our uh, nature preserve located on North Broadway, just above Executive Boulevard where you can go and uh, sign a little ribbon and attach it to a tree in memory of a loved one who has died because of COVID and uh, contemplate the person's life, not only their passage. Uh, but again, 1,094 active cases of COVID in Westchester County on a basis of 171,000 plus people tested. So that is all very good news. Um, New York State has uh, allowed the opening of pools in the state. And so Westchester County has been working on how we would be able to uh, open uh, some of our county pools. We have five public pools in Westchester County, and we're announcing today that we're going to be opening four of them for public use. On Friday, June 26th, we will be opening the Saxon Woods Pool in White Plains, and then also the Sprain Ridge Pool Complex, which involves uh, two pools in Yonkers. That will be followed a week later on Friday, July 3rd, by opening the Wilson Woods Pool in Mount Vernon and the Tibbetts Tibbetts Brook Pool in Yonkers. And of course, July 3rd is the uh, 4th of July weekend. When these pools open, they will be open uh, throughout the course of the week. Uh, we're delaying the opening until these dates in order to be ready for uh, the requirements that New York State has made of us. And also because while students are not in school, they are still in class in homeschooling and we don't want to create a competitive uh, appeal by going out to swim at a time when they need to be finishing up their in-home courses. Now, New York State has laid out some very specific parameters, and that's going to limit some of the things that are usual when we have these pools open. Uh, for example, there will be no aqua playground at the Saxon Woods Pool. Uh, the aqua splash pad is closed at Sprain Ridge. When we open Wilson Woods Pool, the, the wave pool will not have the wave activity. Uh, and the same is true for the aqua playground and the splash pool. And then the Tibbetts Brook Pool There'll be no tubes in the Lazy River, no aqua playground, the slides will be closed, and of course we're going to close the basketball court. All of these restrictions are part of what the state has required uh, local governments and obviously private sector pools to avoid having as part of the pool. So the pools will be open, people will be able to go in and swim and get cool, but they won't be able to have some of these specialty activities because uh, they represent uh, uh, situations that do not allow for social distancing, and of course, without masks in a certain circumstances, it could advance the spread. New York State has required that 50% of maximum occupancy in the pool. So we're going to change the way we normally operate at these pools. It'll be first come, first serve entry. And there will be public pool sessions that will allow for periods of time to clean and disinfect the pool in between two public sessions a day. The public session number one will be from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Then the pool will be closed for one hour to completely disinfect it, and then it'll reopen at 3 o'clock and go to 6 o'clock so that there can be cleaning and disinfecting from 6 until 7 o'clock, and that's at all the pools. Uh, session 1 tickets will be given, and when they're sold out, you then can buy a Session 2 ticket, uh, and this could, you know, represent uh, when you get to the pool and 
when you get into the water. So people who are accustomed to going in the pools are going to have to get accustomed to the way this operates. This is different from past years, um, and it can be difficult. When the Session 2 tickets are sold out, no more tickets will be sold for that day. So the important thing to understand is we're required by state law to make sure that we have a lower than normal occupancy of people in the pool area. And because of that, tickets will be sold so we can maintain a certain percentage, uh, a certain number of people in the pool that hits that 50% mark. It's no different than what we're doing at the two beaches that we've opened for the last two weekends where we're required to maintain a lower than 50% occupancy on the beach. Now, uh, we have not yet gotten perfect beach weather. We may be getting it this weekend. And certainly as we go into the summer months, we're going to have days where it's going to be very hot. People are going to want to go to the pool, but they're going to have to take extra steps in order to be available. We have to disinfect the pool. We have to sanitize it to make sure there's no uh, COVID on all surfaces of the pool. That we would not normally have done, but we have to be able to do that to ensure public health. So that's why we have to close the pool and have an hour-long uh, period of time for, for disinfection. The staff is going to be making announcements every half hour. It will probably be a little intrusive in your everyday life, but it will remind you that park users are required to practice safe social distancing protocols, guests must wear a mask, face covering, whenever you're within six foot of any other guest. Now, if you're on your own uh, blanket with members of your immediate family, that's one thing. But if you get up and you're going to walk across the area, you go to a restroom or to throw something in a garbage can, you will be within six foot of other people. You need to put the mask on for that type of activity. You don't need to have a mask in the water, but the minute you're out of the water and walking around the perimeter of the pool, you're seeing a friend on another side of the pool, you can put the mask on. All of these requirements are not based on ideology. We're trying to help people keep safe. And the whole mission of being able to open up our recreational facilities is so that people can have relief. They can have some enjoyment, but we, can't, we have to do that knowing that we can't afford for our numbers to spike. We've had eight weeks of steady dropping in all the different indicators. It's how we're able to move from one phase to the next according to the, the state regulations, and we have to make sure we do that as well. Now, we will not be opening the Playland Pool, which is the fifth pool in our five-pool situation. The Playland Pool uh, does not fall within the New York State guidelines because they do not allow us to open a swimming pool when it's near a beachfront. The other four pools that we operate are not part of a complex that includes a beach. Playland Pool is adjacent nearby to Playland Beach, so the beach will be open for people to go and use in the cool off, but the pool itself will be closed. Now that pool had been identified for major reconstruction as part of our plans to improve Playland. Money has already been allocated by the Westchester County Board of Legislators. So now we're looking about how quickly we can go about advancing the capital project. We originally intended before COVID to have the Playland pool operate this year, then close at the end of the pool season, which would be right after Labor Day, and then start the reconstruction project. But since Playland pool will be closed for the season, we're going to see if we can start the construction project earlier, which hopefully gives us a chance to complete it for the 2021 season. We generally open our pools the uh, next to last weekend in June or the last weekend in June whenever school is out of session. So in essence, we're opening our pools all on time in two cases and almost on time in the other two cases. But we hope that the fifth pool, Playland, will be able to open next year on time if all goes well. Uh, but we don't quite know how that happens. So I'll just repeat that before I go on to the next topic. Again, on Friday, January 26th, which will be three weeks from this Friday, we will open Saxon Woods Pool in White Plains, and we will open Spring Ridge Pools in Yonkers. They will open to the public, and we will have those two pools back in session. Two, uh, one week later, on Friday, July 3rd, which is the beginning of Independence Day weekend, Friday is the actual celebrated day for the 4th of July weekend, Wilson Woods Pool in Mount Vernon and Tibbetts Brook Pool in Yonkers will open. So as we did with golf courses, they're sequenced on different weeks. Uh, we're going to try to make sure that we maintain uh, the proper protocol. We're going to learn from what we do in week one and apply it in week two and hopefully have enough staff there to be able to accomplish all of these different requirements that the state has laid out in order for us to do this. Uh, in other COVID-related news, we had the first meeting today of our reopening task force. This is a task force I announced on Monday, chaired, co-chaired by Catherine Parker, county legislator, and Lou Lanza, uh, a, a very prominent restaurateur from within the county. Uh, a number of other members are on it representing various organizations, some local chambers of commerce, our major business associations. We have people from the restaurant, the hospitality industry, healthcare industry, uh, and that, that main task force uh, is creating working groups in a variety of different areas. Their mission is to look at exactly how we help 
businesses all across Westchester County implement the rules that the state has created for opening. We know that we're in phase one now, and there's certain things that are open now. Um, uh, we have uh, an opening for construction projects. We have an opening for manufacturing. When phase two comes, which is targeted for Tuesday, June 9th, just a few days from now, our metrics continue to drop, so we're online for this to happen. Uh, those businesses will not be able to open exactly the way they were on February 29th. So there's going to be requirements to, you know, put, put a, a splash guard to protect the people behind the counter. They're going to have to put uh, uh, indicators on the floor where people should stand to show distancing if you're going to check out. Uh, there's going to be protocols about how uh, these stores uh, sanitize themselves. Um, and we also got the good news that uh, the governor announced yesterday that our restaurants will be open for outdoor seating also in phase two on, on June 9th. That was not originally part of the plan. We're very happy to see that. We all know that the restaurant community generates the greatest amount of uh, business that spills over to retail and other activities uh, in the local area. But the restaurants are going to have to go through a certain amount of rules and requirements in order to satisfy these new state situations. And then I might add in phase two, we're also opening uh, administrative offices in addition to retail. And now uh, what we've just announced for outdoor uh, dining, we're going to be opening offices, real estate offices, law offices, uh, consulting groups, information technology, uh, finance offices, and so forth. Major corporate headquarters now can resume with 50 percent of their personnel coming back in. But they have to go through a process, too, and they have to put a plan together that uh, lays out uh, how many people uh, uh, will be accommodated and how they're going to uh, segment their staff so as not to have uh, too many people in at the same time, how they're going to provide hand sanitizing stations and mask wearing and all these different things. So this is what the, the reopening task force is tasked with doing. These different working groups uh, that, that are now underway after today's opening meeting will help try to identify these uh, issues, working through the local chambers of commerce uh, and then working with particular industry segments. Uh, we hope to make it helpful as a county government to, to sort of be a clearinghouse of information where the state regulations may not be exactly specific, help those businesses comply. And we're working closely with our local governments because the local governments have the authority, as an example, to change local zoning laws that will allow for uh, outdoor dining in the major streets of the county. So uh, we have a 3.30 call today, as we do twice a week, with all of the municipal government officials. We're going to go over some of these things. And uh, the County Department of Health has a regulatory responsibility for restaurants. The local governments have a certain regulatory response. We want to mesh these things. We want these things to work in harmony so that more of these businesses can open, we can, we can restart the economy, and do it in a way that avoids having the advancing of the, uh, of the virus. And all of this stuff is very industry specific. It's very building specific. It's, uh, it's tedious, but it's necessary. And so we're very happy that the task force is empowered and together uh, working with all those local business communities, we hope we'll be able to be ready for uh, the June 9th opening. Now that's phase two. We're on track for phase two, all factors being equal. We're part of a region, by the way, and I know that uh, some of our friends are here from News 12. You're covering Orange County and you're covering uh, Putnam County and Rockland County uh, with news, and those counties are all part of the same region, so we're all in the same boat together. Their county executives are doing different things as well to try to accommodate these changes. Every community is a bit different here in Westchester. We're very close to Connecticut. We have uh, many things that compare us to Connecticut. We're on the borderline of New York City. We share this portion of the, of the region. Uh, borders New York City. New York City will not yet be open, so there's a host of things that we have to worry about in Westchester, but it is part of an overall region. So uh, those are the announce announcements for today. Good news on the numbers continued. Uh, a, a plan to open up pools to go along with the beaches that we've opened and the golf courses and the, uh, uh, the hiking trails and the biking trails. We'll have more announcements probably tomorrow with more recreational information. And uh, also we're hopeful that uh, we're heading in the right direction day by day. It's, it's a difficult time, a difficult task, but hopefully we can do it well. So with that, I'm going to stop the presentation, open it up to any of my friends in the media, any questions that you may have. Yeah, Samantha? Are lifeguards or any staff at these public pools be making sure that people are social distancing while in the pools as well as out of the pools? Well, we're going to have lifeguards on duty for life-saving purposes. Uh, th their role in social distancing is, is minimal 
because we really want them to be alert and ready to jump in and save a life if a life is in jeopardy. But we will have other park personnel that are there to try to ensure social distancing. We, as we have so far with our beaches and our other parks, we enforce this very lightly. We're not looking to write tickets. We're certainly not looking to arrest people. We're hoping that uh, by being reasonable and people understand we're not doing this for political reasons. We're doing this to just try to protect other people from whatever, you know, um, uh, germs might be in the area, whatever in this case virus might be in the area. So, but we will have other staff available to do that. Uh, we'll, they'll be backed up by uh, county police services, which will help in the uh, physical logistics of crowd uh, flow. You do get, uh, when these pools open in the beginning of, a, of an hour segment, there's always a rush of people. We want to try to make sure that's spaced out. And so between our parks department people and our county police, we think we can do that effectively. Lay the game plan out. We've got a couple of weeks to work through the kinks and make sure that we're ready to go when, uh, when the buzzer goes, in the first case, on the 26th at the pools. The beaches are open and will be open on the weekend. And then when we hit the 26th, which is the opening date for the first two pools, at that point in time, our beaches will then go to the normal summertime schedule. At Croton Point Park, that's a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday schedule. At Playland Beach, that's seven days a week except Monday, so six days a week. Uh, with the exception of Monday. And so at that date forward, the beaches will go through a normal period of time. And hopefully we'll give people some relief because the hot weather is here and it's going to come. It's going to be worse. And we want to give people a reasonable, uh, you know, a reasonable way to, to beat the heat. Agreed. Thank you. Very good. Thank Other questions? Uh, Catherine Chaffee, our Director of uh, Communications. Uh, Martin Wilbur would like to know, is the plan for the county schools to operate daily once they are open, weather permitting? Yes. Yeah, our, our intent is for them to operate as they normally would in season, which is a, a regular weekly flow. And that's why we've delayed in opening them until what would normally be the week. Actually, the, the, the two latter pools will be a week delayed. The, uh, uh, the Wilson Woods and the Tibbetts Brook will be a week later than we, they normally would be open. But we're doing things very differently. And while the plans, I think, make a lot of sense, we have to see how the plans look in reality. And frankly, we usually get a, um, a heavier attendance at uh, the Tibbetts and the Wilson Woods pools than we do at the other one. So we'll try it out with a little less strong demand, make sure we work out the, the bugs in any system we have, and then have it fully operative for all, all four pools that will be open the following weekend. Okay. And then another quick question from the General News. What's the protocol to use bathrooms, locker rooms, and are concession stands going to be open? Concession stands will not be open. The state has not yet authorized us to be able to do that. Uh, locker rooms will also not be open. Uh, the, the basic protocol going to the restrooms is uh, when, you know, when you approach the restrooms, uh, there'll be a sequencing, you know, so that there's a, a spacing so you can't have too many people in the restroom at the same time. And uh, people will be expected to maintain social distancing. Um, we think most people, once again, will be realistic about how to do that given the services uh, inside the restrooms. The restrooms will be open and, and our staff will be responsible for an almost constant sanitization of the bathrooms because of the ebb and flow of people. This is one of the hardest tasks that we have to do, but of course we have to have bathroom services open in order to accommodate people. And his last question is, um, are there any issues staffing lifeguards or other jobs at the pool? At this point, no. Um, you know, we're still dealing with the fact that we have not opened a Playland Amusement Park, which is often a source of many employment uh, positions. So. We're down in the number of available positions, which means we have a pretty good demand to fill the positions that we do need to fill. So we're not short of personnel staff to use uh, for the pools, as we have not been short for the beaches. Uh, but we, th we think we'll be fine. This is, uh, you know, everybody says it's a cliche. It's all uncharted waters, and we're figuring it out as we go along. But it seems like we got it figured out at the beach, so now we're going to try to figure it out at the pool. And uh, we think we'll have the staff to help us do that. Very good. So if there are no other questions, anyone uh, from, the, from the media who has questions for us, please give Catherine a call. We're happy to follow up offline if there are any other questions. Uh, we'll be here tomorrow to give an update. We'll obviously have the statistical numbers. We expect to have some additional announcement about recreational services. Uh, we're still working through, you know, some of the decision elements, make sure that when we announce it, we're solidly based and we can go forward. And, uh, you know, we'll see what other kinds of announcements we have uh, as we go into the weekend. Thank you for watching. George Latimer, County Executive. Have a good day and stay safe.